Well, welcome everybody and welcome to another session in our Women Lead webinar series brought to you by Connected Women of Influence. I'm Patty Vargas, I'm your host for today and we're delighted to bring yet another informative webinar to our Association of Professional Women. And our Women Lead webinars are designed for you, the professional leader in business, whether you're an aspiring woman leader or a woman leading people, projects, a division or a business. And we select topics and themes that will support your goal to lead, to achieve and to succeed more effectively in business. Our webinar, webinar today is just shy of an hour. We welcome your questions. Anything that you'd like to ask or make a comment about, just submit it through the chat window and I'm happy to serve those up for our uh, wonderful guest here today. So the focus of our webinar today is corporate wellness and your remote workforce. And this whole idea of having a remote workforce, you know, where it used to be in the past, it was a, a fraction of our teams and now it's obviously expanded and making sure that we keep them healthy and productive and so forth is, is becoming a bigger thing than ever before. And I wanna introduce our thought leader today. Uh, we have with us today, Eva Venari. Let me tell you a little bit about Eva. She's known as the healing rebel, and she likes to say that we can have it all. We can have energy like we've never experienced before. We can have a natural glow that helps us feel and look younger with no fads, no trends, and completely drug-free. Eva is a certified nutritional counselor in nutritional balancing and hair mineral analysis supported by near infrared sauna therapy. I sound really smart when I say these things. <laughs> She's also certified in personal nutrition, chakra healing, Akashic record reading, and she's soon to be certified as an MINDS holistic alternative psychology master practitioner. But today, what Eva of the Elevate Institute is going to be sharing with us is a program that will, will help uh, help business owners, help business leaders, help corporate leaders um, put together, provide a program for their employees that will uh, identify maybe sources of low energy. And then what do we do to correct that? How do we course correct and improve their productivity, their attitude, and just their overall well-being? So without further ado, it's all yours, Eva. So what Thanks, you Patty. To share? <laughs> well, so much. And the question is always not the what, but where to begin. Um, and I, I, I had this, this thought, I thank you so much for the introduction. It's like, that's, that's such a small portion now. It's like so far away from where we are today in COVID and how it's affecting us and whether you're a company of one or a one of many numbers in a large corporation, we've all had this shared experience. And I'm going to ex extend the screen. Let's go here to our beginning slide. Whoops, there we are. So why is corporate wellness something that needs to shift and change is what Patty said is we, we've gone from having a fraction of our workforce work from home to having multitudes and the majority of our teammates working from home. And the, the things that used to be marginalized and somewhat important, but not at the forefront of large companies and even small ones have, have become bigger. And, and how do we manage these people? And is the management uh, stepping on and infringing upon our ability to be productive? How can we attract and retain good staff? Uh, the turnover, the time that it takes to train somebody new is very costly. So we want to keep our employees happy. The unplanned absences uh, due to chronic illnesses, well, guess what? They're avoidable. Um, the physical distancing can lead to, and what we're going to talk about today, depression, insomnia, and anxiety. And they're really big words, but I guess, you know, the more that we are easily able to distract ourselves from experiencing them, and actually getting to the bottom of them and, and owning our own emotional state of being, well, we can keep ourselves from having the chronic illnesses that I'm gonna talk more about shortly. So let's get into the what. Yes, COVID-19 has tripled depression rates. Did you know this? It's 
exhausting the amount of resources that the professional community is saying is required. They simply do. They is the, the uh, psychotherapists, psychologists, uh, the, the therapists, they do not have enough people to wrap our minds around that. There are not enough people to handle all of us who are going through this state of depression that is coming upon us. 27.8% of US adults, and that doesn't include the children. If you think about how hopeless and helpless we can feel under these states of uncertainty, imagine what a child who's depending on a parent for their stability, imagine what they're going through, not having their school friends to hang out with and not having their colleagues the same way that you, you do at work. So <clears throat> all of these things have, have changed, they've shifted. And these are recent studies. I, I, you know, we're looking at uh, September of 2020. This is just very, very recent. So really, I, I wanna say this, that from one of the, the main topics of, of this particular issue here with depression, there was a um, psychotherapist, Catherine Kinmond, and she's quoted to say in this article, the potential benefits from mandatory mass quarantine need to be weighed carefully against the possible psychological costs. You know, we're not just talking about money here. We're talking about the mind chatter, the how can I feel safe? Um, what's going on with the constant social changes, the job changes, am I gonna be let go? Um, there, the lack of privacy at home when you're working from home, uh, you think, here's, here's something, I used to think of work as a place of vacation. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, true story. Uh, I was raising two kids on my own and there's cats to take care of and there's dishes to do and all the chores and laundry's got to be done and that doesn't go away uh, because physically we're not able to leave our problems at a brick and mortar door and then go into a workspace and feel you know that, that we're somewhat in a, in a different cocoon, a different world. So we have to learn to create those for ourselves. So anyways, depression, very, very real. It's pressing uh, on those who don't really have the good communication skills to ask for what they want. And oftentimes women are the last to ask for what they want. Uh, if you crave the physical attention, the physical touch of people, the physical interaction, that water cooler talk, you know, how do we, how do we get around that? So these all sound like social things um, that I'm talking about, but they create physical issues in the body. A depression is just the beginning of imbalance in the body that can lead to what doesn't show up on x-rays, what we call invisible illnesses. So let's go to the next issue, insomnia. I don't know about you, but many, many people are now having increased sleep disturbances. So you know what it's like at two o'clock in the afternoon and you're reaching for that second cup of coffee. What if the first cup of coffee doesn't work? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, that's a little scary, a little panic sets in. So. Like, did you know, I have to say this, did you know that it takes energy to sleep? Hmm. Yeah. What do you mean by that? <laughs> there are hormones that are fueled by the food that we eat, uh, AKA minerals, my favorite word, minerals, um, that if the body is not processing well, then uh, the fuel won't get to the hormones. The hormones won't then be sent by the blood to the proper places. So think about this. Uh, we all know, I think we know, that there's a signal that's sent from our brain to our stomach saying, I'm hungry when we want to eat. And then when we're full, a hormone is released, created by minerals, right? And it releases to the brain and says, I'm full, stop. I'm hungry to I'm full. Those are all signals sent over the system, the body, uh, through minerals, through hormones. Uh, one is the fuel, one is the transit system. So uh, the sleep pattern, not any different. So there's serotonin to wake you up in the morning mm -hmm. and there's melatonin, to put you to sleep at night. Many people have reached for melatonin and the drugstore or Costco has the 500 count bottle you can get you know, it's a hormone. It helps you take it, you take it at night and helps you sleep. Well, okay, anytime you're taking a hormone externally, it's like getting behind a car that's out of gas and pushing it to your next destination. So why don't we just put fuel in the tank? And, and that's what I'm talking about nutrition. 
Hmm. So <clears throat> yeah, it, it, if we have enough energy from our food and from our, from our minerals, from our diet, from our lifestyle, from taking care of ourselves first, instead of taking care of others first, we will have enough energy to produce our own melatonin and go to sleep. I like to say, Sarah wakes us up and Mel puts us to sleep. Like, okay. <laughs> Eva, let me ask you a question. Are you hearing from people that because of, of being locked down and, and working from home and so forth, that people's sleep patterns are being disrupted because the whole day cycle is, is disrupted as well? Like they might be sleeping later in the morning and working later at night or vice versa um, is yeah. that playing into it 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 is I, I like to go back to i'm a trekkie so i i love thinking about you know captain picard or captain kirk whichever one you like more asking for a damage report you know and every morning you're getting faced with these change of lifestyle possibilities. Um, yes, there's a little bit of letting go of the need to show up at a certain time anymore. It takes, we don't have to get up at 6.30 or 5.30 to get ourselves ready to go to get into a car and commute half an hour to an hour, depending on where you are, uh, to, to find the physical place where we work. It is now, a, oh, I can roll out of bed, put on some underwear if I so choose, put on something on top so that I show up okay on Zoom, <laughs> you know? <laughs> brush the hair. Um, it, it, there's a whole different set of responsibilities that we can uh, grab onto as opposed to continuing. So right. there, there are things that we've done self-imposed to disrupt our own sleep cycles. And one of the things I've been talking about for a long time is maintain your schedule. That is probably the biggest uh, thing that I can say is that's helpful to your psychology because you're right. We do get into a state of, we receive a certain amount of stability and security in having the same routine over and over again. It sets to our body, everything is okay. Everything is well, I'm okay to digest my food. I am okay to process and create new cells. I am okay. If the body, let me stress this. If the body doesn't get to a place of I am okay, it doesn't digest your food. Mm -hmm. It doesn't create new cells. You don't create the hormones and you don't go to sleep well. And <laughs> make matters worse, getting to sleep is not the only issue here. You know, when they talk about, um, you know, exhaustion and passing out. It, it, it is not the recipe for long-term wellness. That's, that's for illness, if you want that. Um, and we are often distracted by fear from loss, from the news hype, from the social isolation, the fear of getting the virus. You know, <clears throat> it, that's a real fear. Yeah. yeah. Uh, concerns around loved ones getting the virus. Well, what happens if my dad has it? Or what happens if, if he ends up in the hospital? And I, how can I go visit him? What if I can't say goodbye? These are the rabbit hole ideas that go in our mind. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> we can't really escape them too much. Um, but we're just having to, to work through it all. So what I really wanna focus on in, in, in this particular subject here is, is what is chronic insomnia? What does that mean to you? What does it look like? So you can identify it. If you find yourself going down those rabbit holes, reflect on, are you able to fall asleep within 30 minutes more than three times a week should be not, it should be, uh, in other words, if you are not able to fall asleep within 30 minutes more um, than three times a week for more than three months. Okay, we've been do, doing this, this COVID isolation stuff for more than three months, so we should have a pattern down. Keep track of it, note it. Um, I'm gonna add to that. If you are waking up sometime before you're rested, uh, two o'clock, three o'clock, four o'clock in the morning. Can't get back to sleep until the alarm goes off. That was my life for 20 yep. years. Yep. Yeah, that's me. <laughs> so, well, that's a different type of insomnia. This is body's functions trying to occur in the nighttime. We have uh, a body clock. So every night at a, at a certain hour, whatever our time is for the time zone of the planet where we are living, so Pacific Standard Time, um, every morning at one o'clock, the body's going through issues, uh, trying to correct things going into the brain, turning short-term memory into long-term memory. By two and three o'clock, we're talking about adrenals. Mm -hmm. 
by four o'clock, we're talking about liver and the lungs. So, you know, if you have certain things going on in your body where you have dis-ease setting in, the body will wake you up. These are things to be aware of. They're very easy to ignore, very easy to drink that cup of coffee or whatever it is you use to stimulate yourself in the morning to get through the day. Don't, and don't ignore it for too long. You can ignore it for a little while, do the short-term coffee fix, but then look at what is causing the problem and let's, let's repair that. So you can have mineral imbalances that are created and held. It'll hold you into place long after COVID is gone and you'll still have insomnia. I've suffered, I suffered insomnia for more than 20 years. It was a state of practice. My body was locked in there minerally. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, I'm going to move because I hear the gardeners. That's my life. We're all working from home. Yes, exactly. <laughs> so sorry, guys. Go, on, go into the living room. All right. So hopefully that's better. <laughs> so yeah, the last thing we want is to have these little things of waking up in the middle of the night turn into obesity. You know, how hard is it? We think, oh, we're doing all the right things. We're eating the right foods. We're um, getting enough sleep. If you're able to get enough sleep, we're exercising and you still can't lose the weight. Nothing's changed. Absolutely. Everything's changed. Mm -hmm. So we have to give our body time to overcome the adjustments and the changes that are going on around us. So chronic conditions absolutely can occur just by not getting enough sleep. Got it. Okay. So big one. The other one here, anxiety. So much on this can be said. Um, if you hear it in my voice right now, the, the uh, gardeners outside show up on Monday mornings and they disrupt a ton of my meetings. So I try really hard to work around them, but sometimes they have a schedule that changes on their own. Mm -hmm today. So always adjustment. We're always adjusting. We're always changing. The new norm is get ready for a change. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah. And, and I, you know, I've heard some mental health professionals say that that's one of the best things you can do for yourself is to prepare for change, you yeah. know, especially if you are a, a very ordered person, like I tend to be, um, that's not so easy. It, 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 yes. And you want to know an interesting little thing about uh, minerals, since that's my world, a person who is dumping, and that's, that's when the body is removing a lot of magnesium will be held in a state of stubbornness, if you will, like a willfulness. So we can see that on the body, if we're not getting enough of a certain mineral that can keep us locked in a place of inflexibility. So it's another thing to be on the lookout for that mineral imbalances can keep us in a state of inflexibility, but um, practice can also move us out of it to some degree. And that's just, we're getting a lot of practice now, aren't we? Yeah. Um, so yeah, and anxiety, of course, that can be something that affects our sleep and it leads to deeper depression. So you can see one leads to the other, leads to the other, leads to the other. And it's a nice little round circle. They all travel together. They're, they're the three amigos. Think of it. They're friends. <laughs> they all, they all work together. And so I often will work with people who don't just have one. They have all three because one leads to the next. Okay. Um, and it takes the body, the nervous system that we have, it takes us about two weeks to overcome change, whether it is considered positive change or negative change. Having people say to me, oh, Eva, I'm getting married. It's all fun stuff. It's good. It's, it's, good. It's, it's a good change in life. Yeah. Guess what? Your body still needs two weeks to overcome. So every time you move, every time you get married, get divorced, have to change jobs, have to change homes, um, buy a new bed or a piece of furniture. And any, any time a change happens with the number of people in your home. It's a change. And I really want people to stop sweeping those things under the rug and deciding that it's okay, it's normal, it's fine. I can just brief this a time for reflection. It's a time for really finding out if this works for you or not. You don't have to live under duress all the time, but do give yourself the time. Be kind to your body and allow for that time to overcome. And that just means you're gonna feel a little sense of overwhelm. Okay. You're going to feel a heightened sense of fearfulness, even sad, sadness, anger. And oftentimes remember anger will come from being hurt or confused. So those two, those things can be really, they can circle together like amigos as well. And that feeling of helplessness that I mentioned earlier, that can really contribute 
to anxiety. But, um, you know, this doesn't have to stay on the mind. I'm, I'm painting a very grim picture here um, on purpose. <laughs> because sometimes if nobody talks about it, they think nobody's going through it. But all three of these slides reflect articles, multiple articles actually, that are out there right now talking about how all three of these things are on the rise. And guess what? If we don't do something to mitigate their effects, they will absolutely cause physical problems in the body, starting with <laughs> just the feeling of anxiety, depression, and insomnia, and they can lead to more things, uh, including hypothyroidism. Oh, Eva, I've had that in my family forever. It has nothing to do with anxiety and depression. Absolutely, it does. They're all related. So this is about a uh, holistic approach, and it's, it's very feminine in its nature. Anyways, it comes down to what truly is well-being. Okay. So let's do something here. How can we take back the sense of well-being in your day? And it's as simple to me as making this decision. Discern very well for yourself what you can control and what you cannot. And then pay attention more to the things that you can control. And that's really you, isn't it? Mm -hmm. <laughs> it, it's you it's inside your body it's inside your mind it's what passes from the inception of your thought of your idea and you allow space and i call it real estate of the mind allow it to go and traverse from one side of the brain to the other if you believe it or not and if you let something go unchecked that's called mind chatter i don't necessarily deal with the mind chatter as much as i do with why is the mind chatter there mm. So oftentimes we have um, uh, repeating recordings going on in our mind that keep us from being productive because we're so worried about X, Y, and Z. I'm going to watch the news. I'm going to watch a, a news channel. I'm going to listen to what is said by all of these different people. To what end? Does it make you feel good? Do you feel informed or do you feel emotionally affected? And this is just a tip right here in this in this program on this webinar to immediately affect and change how you feel daily. It is not necessarily a focus of working with me as a program, but it is something that I implore is something that I use for myself as a strategy. I don't read articles. I don't listen to the news and I don't talk. I don't have conversation with people who are focused on affecting my emotional state. Hmm. Yeah. <laughs> so. How do you do that within teams, Eva? Well, <laughs> remember I said it's what you spend more time on. It's, right. it's, it's the most. So spend most of your time there controlling what you can for yourself to give yourself stability. Uh, allow yourself time with other people. And then you'll, it's interesting. You'll notice that muscle of, of um, discernment. It, it's affected. It's changed as you practice this. And as you come into contact with people, you may have a little bit more compassion for those who need to vent. And then at the same time, love yourself and go, okay, I'll see you later. Hang up and bye. If we can't stay focused on the project and you need time for yourself, then we'll reconnect later. Like that kind of stuff, that's workflow. But when it comes to how it affects you physically, <laughs> my gardeners have now moved to the other side. I am moving back. <laughs> control what you can control, Eva. That's what I'm doing. This is a really good example. Okay. <laughs> oh, I love it. Um, all right. So here's the thing. When it comes to wellness, your goal is not to be symptom free. Everybody thinks that that's the goal, don't they? Yeah. <laughs> the goal is to, to be aware. Am I feeling something? Do I feel capable in my body? Do I feel confident that it can overcome whatever I'm exposed to? Do I feel secure in my own ability to take care of myself? Everybody thinks it's the hunt and kill method that's, that's wellness. It is not. You're going to learn something with me that you haven't learned elsewhere, <laughs> including that gardeners are still allowed to use gas powered blowers. <laughs> oh, anyways, when we're not listening to them, we are going to be doing this. So <laughs> Evolve Academy 
is my program that I offer to not just individuals uh, within my Reveal Optimal Health Intensive, but to corporations and individuals who are part of a, a group. And here are the pieces of it that I have found work really, really well to mitigate these stresses. And let's talk about what stress is here in a minute. Um, we're simplifying self-care. How, how many times have you heard a multitude of really great opinions about what you, others think you should do to take care of yourselves? Like, it's crazy. Yeah. Um, drink alkaline water. Um, make sure that you exercise so hard that you pass out. Uh, eat a banana every day. Can I just tell you all three of those things are detrimental to your health? <laughs> and I can show that on a hair test. But anyways, stress reduction. My stress is gonna include firing the gardener. So stress reduction is not so much about the drama in life. It is more about the stress of the relationship of minerals in your body. Everybody thinks stress is drama. You're like, oh no, it, it has nothing to do with that. <laughs> They're on both sides of the house now. They're, they're not very, you can barely hear it, so. But I can hear them and they're distracting me, so I'm changing <laughs> my location. All right, this is better. <laughs> Sorry, guys. Ah, okay, so. <laughs> yeah, stress is held in place by toxic loads. And I'm like, well, Eva, everything's toxic. Well, yeah, it, it is, you're right. So. It's about what you can do to mitigate it. Replace environmental toxins for greater function. So what does that mean? We're using a ton of cleaners right now in our homes, on our hands, um, not to mention what we were using before. Um, choices in our personal care, makeup, uh, laundry detergent, what we use to clean the kitchen, to the bathtub, to the toilet. All of those things are toxic exposures. Hmm. And we don't pee them out, right? We're just a receptacle site for it and our body holds on to it. So the only way to get them out is to do some sort of ongoing detox, like get to that place of I can, the body can, and then it will come out. But it's, it's about getting there. And we do that through implementing lifestyle changes. And can I just share this? <laughs> I had a, a client who he's in England. And he rents a door, like a room, right? That's all he has. And so his internet service provider, everything is in his room. There's no escape from the EMFs. And there's two things. There's the environmental factor of the toxin of the EMF affecting his sleep. And then you have the lifestyle change of choosing not to put his cell phone next to him at bedtime. Within 10 feet of the head, it disturbs your brain. Even if you put it in airplane mode, it's the battery. Okay, so we took his phone and we put it in the bathroom so that it would, um, when the alarm sounded, it would echo and he would hear it. And then we took the Wi-Fi, the internet connection that was sitting under his bed, feet away from his little head. And we moved it to the exact opposite end of the room. And just by doing those few changes, he was able to get better sleep. So what we do together is to look through your whole experience what needs to be changed right away what are the main problems and what can be what is good for everybody um so there's there's two different approaches we track the progress with group and that's what's good for everybody and then we have one-on-one -on -one coaching so those those are the things that are important because not everybody is a self-starter not everybody can take information even the little bit that i've shared today it won't get implemented unless you have somebody to talk you through it because we are afraid to do something wrong okay so yeah, these, these, are the, these are the very simple things. We've become so accustomed to our way of life and taken on new and different ways of creating comfort for ourselves that we have really neglected asking that question, is this good for me? And so in this way, we can make the adjustments back so that you can have as little interference and in, at least we can help the depression, the anxiety, and the insomnia from getting worse, okay? And then backing it up, that, that becomes a more of a mineral process, but at least this can stop things, it can mitigate it. Do we have any questions so far? I just wanna stop and make sure. 
Uh, there is one question um, about if you have a staff, you know, and you're not seeing them other than maybe on a Zoom call, uh, what are some of the things that you might um, pick up on, you know, whether they actually say something or not, what are some cues that you might be able to pick up on that things are not going really well for them? Ask is one. If they're afraid to, to mention it, they may be showing up late or forgetting that they have an appointment with you all together. Mm -hmm. um, the productivity. So there's usually some sort of process that a, a template of Here's how you need to do X, Y, and Z to do your job, right? If you know that works, but the person, and they use, the person used to be in an office and it used to work for that person, now they're at home and it doesn't, then they have something going on. The processes aren't off, it's the person. Yeah, okay. So that's my biggest clue. That's, that's what I use for my own staff. I'm like, all right, we missed a meeting, what happened? Right, <laughs> right. Where were you? Did, was somebody sick? We need to communicate. And so it's, it's a matter of going back to the basics. This really has become a fantastic opportunity to hone our skills on intimate communication. And I don't mean like lover's intimacy. I'm talking about really using our words well to describe what's going on with us, being vulnerable and allowing others to take care of us. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, yeah. Great. Okay. Um, the how it works, I've kind of said a few things around it. Rather than that hunt and kill method of we're going to set a goal and we're going to achieve it no matter what comes in our way. This is really tuning in to the body, the natural rhythms of the body. And I'll give you an example of that. We know that sleep happens in cycles of 90 minutes. Every 90 minutes or so, we're going through the REM cycle, right? So did you know that that same cycle of energy happens while we're awake? Hmm. Okay. Yeah, most say, people, say, yeah. Say more about that. What do you mean? Yeah. So <clears throat> when you're awake, um, there's an expectation that we want to have high energy all the time. Think of I'm in a car, I've got the engine turned on, the car is in neutral and I've got my foot to the floor on the gas. <laughs> so, <laughs> um, where are you going? Like nowhere. The idea is to allow for the same cycles that we know that we have in sleep, which is we go through a period of dreaming and then we go through a period of not dreaming and we go through a period of recycle. You know, there, there's, there's repair, there's things to do. And then we go through these and another whole 90 minute cycle again. The body works the same way when it comes to productivity during the day. When you wake up, you'll have another 90 minutes to get through. So we, we know, I think we've heard a lot of this, we can learn something new in a 15 minute spurt and be very active and understand, comprehend, retain, and be able to use the information. If we stop at 15 minutes, how often do you let yourself go past 15 minutes though? Mm -hmm. And next thing you know, you're tired, you're reaching for the coffee and you're like, I can't think of a creative idea to save my life. Right. So we give in, we have to give into that. So it's, it's learning the, the cycles that works for us. For me, it's the 15 minutes of a download learning something new, reading an article, letting that inspire me. And then I apply it, apply that for 15 minutes and then do another 15 minutes of troubleshooting. Did that work? Is that right? And it's like, do we have time for that? Yeah, and everything that we do, we have time for that. Because if we don't, then you're going to spend 15 minutes, uh, 20 times in a day getting nothing done. Mm -hmm. Think about how you get up and leave, take a, take a walk. And, or I have some of my best ideas in the shower. Mm -hmm because I'm out in front of my desk. Right. There's that time for relaxation and allowing. And so if we, if we allow for the body's natural rhythms and you tap into that and you know what to expect, give yourself that break. If you notice that you work really well by taking 20 minutes of work and then five minutes of off, go get a glass of water, uh, take a quick walk, check the mail, all these things that we would do if we're home, just don't forget that you're still working. Come back to your desk and you'll feel more, more like working again. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So that's really what it comes down to is you give your body what it needs and not in the just the simplistic way, but in very, very um, comprehensive ways. And it's about implementing things a little bit at a time because how do we do that? A little bit at a time. Mm -hmm. so I'm gonna, I, I don't hear the gardeners downstairs and I need my drawing device. So I'm gonna go downstairs. What we're gonna do together 
if we don't have any more questions immediately anyways. Not yet. Okay, good. Um, we're gonna try something. So I want to explain this after I ask everybody to do this one thing. Why don't you get out a piece of paper or your phone and I want you to think about something that you're grateful for today. Just one, just one thing. And I'll give you a minute. <clears throat> Patty, let me know when you have one thing you're grateful for. I do. Perfect. Okay. So I'm going to assume everybody else does as well. And then I'm going to show you this. So I should be able to annotate, view my options, annotate. There it is. Draw. Okay. So here we are. We're happy. <laughs> and we're experiencing some, something that we are grateful for. Okay, we'll call that a star. Maybe we can think of a couple of things that we're grateful for because, well, we like them. Okay, so we've got these stars. Now, think about the things that you don't like so much. What should we give those? We'll just give them a check mark. How's that? Yeah, that's a boring symbol. So that'll work. Yeah. So think of a few of these things. Do you feel like it's possible to learn to be grateful for these things too? Does it seem counterintuitive? Does it seem stressful? Unreasonable? Judgmental, yes? Mm -hmm. Think about how everything is part of our lives. Everything fits into this circle. This is everything we experience. This is an example of not just the things around us happening in our circumstances. It's what we're thinking. It's what we're feeling. It's, you know, how Cameron, if, you, if you've ever seen me on a Zoom call, CWI, Cameron, my cat, he gets up on my desk between the camera and my, myself every time, every time. <laughs> so I have to think about how everybody loves to see him. He loves to see everybody. And therefore it becomes something <laughs> that happens for me and for others making us happy so it's good. So that's that's how I have to look at things. So if you could take one of those things that you normally think, oh, I don't like that and find a way to be grateful for it because it's happening for you. Think about how a rose bush is pruned. Does the rose bush hate the scissors? Or does it know that come springtime, it's gonna have the right shoots to grow more flowers? So that's kind of, that's one of the little tools and tips and tricks that I use to refocus from everything's terrible. I can't get enough sleep. I don't understand why I can't seem to uh, get this project done on time. I'm procrastinating. I can't seem to make my appointments, like that kind of stuff. It can be shifted. And it's just a matter of refocusing from everything's happening for me. Maybe those things that are happening are alerts. They're body communications that we're hearing as, as problems. Mm -hmm. And they just need to be a time for reflection, a time for self-care. Okay. So it's all about how we look at things. So let's, let's try it again. If you were to go ahead and pick one of those check marky items that you don't like so much and give it a new spin, see if you can do that. And that's a new way to look at gratitude journaling. Mm -hmm. Do we have any other questions? I see one popping up. Yeah. Let's... Yeah, so someone is asking, what do you think about the effectiveness of CBD for sleep and anxiety? I think it's a great tool. I use it to reduce the overall stress factor in the body so that it can absorb the minerals much more easily into the body. 
lowers the body's uh, stress level immensely, brings you into that state of homeostasis. But it's the what kind and how much that often people ask about. That should be done on a conversation level. I, I try not to give broad stroke recommendations. But yeah, CBD can be useful. Again, it's a Band-Aid. Be careful of what we use and thinking it's a cure uh, as opposed to really finding out what is keeping you up at night to begin with. Mm -hmm. So it's a two-pronged approach. Use the CBD to get your sleep and then continue to ask the question as long as you have to use the CBD. Right. Because if you're having to continue to use the CBD oil to get to sleep, it's a crutch. Yes, yes. Okay. Excellent. That, yeah, that discernment is something that I'm used to, but it, it, it's it's just in my head. I, I immediately see the difference between the two. And that's, you want to bounce ideas off of me? That's what I'm here for. Good question. Yeah, great question. Mm -hmm. Okay, so do I still have control? I do not. Let me close this, try again. And now I do. Yes, okay. So, oh, my annotations are still there. <laughs> This is awesome. Let me erase all that. The happiness and the unhappiness. <laughs> because it makes my flower look weird. Okay. So you've got an example. You've, you've, you've received a few things from me to see how ready. It's simple to implement. They should be sustainable. These are things that work for you for life. And sustainable meaning if you stop doing something, does the problem, does the symptom come back up? That means it's not sustainable. And that's what I say about CBD. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. So if you have a solution, then it's truly a solution that allows you to release your grip on managing that said problem. Okay. And the energy that we use to grip a problem and manage it is now coming from our healing reservoir. So think about that every time you think, oh, I'm, I'm just, I'm taking this pill every day. What kind of strain is that putting on the body really and, and the overall length of time it, everything's accumulative right okay well and, and it seems like um you know like one of your earlier slides it showed you know these four steps basically that all that you you do them all together because yeah. i know in the past for myself i've been like oh somebody said i should take magnesium oh somebody said i should meditate 30 minutes a day. Oh, so, you know, all of these kind of, uh, slap, slap wish things, you know, where you just do this and you do that and you do, and then none of them seem to work. Um, or they conflict with what somebody else is telling, you know, that you should do. So having a, a holistic and integrated approach just makes a lot more sense. Yeah, it, it, it is. It, it, it's been a thing that works for me because here's where I find a lot of feedback from, individuals who have tried different programs in the past. And I mean like diet programs, exercise programs. We promise you the world if you just follow this simple, you know, whatever it is. Mm -hmm. And the sustainability comes into mind after that. It's like, would you continue doing it if it didn't work? Or if you didn't see the changes that showed that it worked along the way? You want to hit milestones. You want to have some things measurable. You want to have something that gives you a sense of I'm moving in the right direction. Not just a test result, but I'm feeling better. I feel more confident. I feel stronger. I feel emotionally more capable. All of these things are signs and symptoms of true progression. And these are things you can implement that are not just good for working. They're good for life. These things, these skill sets are things that you bring into you. They're far at last. I put it at far at last the time we work together. It, that, I say that all the time. So if, if it's something you, we should be able to have energy, clarity of thought, strength, all the way through to the end of life. I, I mean, I want to, I, I don't want to die in a car accident. That's not what I'm saying. I'm saying, you know, we shouldn't be kept alive by preservatives and drugs for 10 years before we finally do die. It's, we want to have that quality of life. And that's what we're teaching you here. Mm -hmm. Okay. Good. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Um, the other thing I want to really touch on, we're very concerned about COVID getting it. Um, how do we recover from it? All of these things, the depression, the anxiety, the insomnia, they all lower your immune system. Okay, so the more focus we put on the fear that goes behind all of this, okay, will I get it? Will I survive it? Will others around me survive it? Like all of that 
can be mitigated. I'm not saying that COVID doesn't kill. I'm saying the people who are dying as a result of being exposed to COVID is because they already have a condition pre-existing. Mm-hmm. The ones who are overcoming it, like myself, because I had it as well, um, they're overcoming it because their immune system is fortified. So now is the time to take care of ourselves while we're waiting for the vaccine, fine, start and then continue because the vaccine alone is is not gonna be enough. We need to take take care of our bodies now to forever. So that's as morbid as I'm going to get. (laughs) (laughs) All right, so here are some things that people are saying about this program. This process has changed my life. I get more done in a day than ever before. This is Jen, she has her own startup program. She's not with the uh, Connected Women of Influence, so I didn't mention that, but that's okay. Uh, I just feel better overall. This is a very feminine way of healing. I never knew about before. He's a private client of mine, Robert. And then I'm sleeping better. Look who this is. I have more energy and I don't crave wine like I used to. (laughs) Which Michelle do we think this is? Yeah. (laughs) So, (laughs) and the effects of these little things, they have long-term ripple effects in our lives overall, because the more we feel like we are stable within ourselves, more confident in our body's ability to overcome illness when we are exposed to it, because it's not an if, it's a when, how well do we overcome it? All of these things are what drives our productivity. Okay, so why me? Because I too am a overachieving, previously sick corporate ladder climber turned holistic practitioner. And it was a necessity because I came to a place where I was unable to sleep well, and yet had to sleep or rest for 17 hours a day, could not raise my kids, could not have a job, couldn't even cook for myself. I remember one time being stuck on my bed and my little girls come into my room and saying, mommy, will you please tuck us in and read us a story? And I said, I'm sorry, I can't get out of bed. I am too tired to help you. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I have found my way back. I am not in a wheelchair. Like they said, I would be, I don't have the arthritis. I don't have the chronic fatigue. I've been there. I know what it looks like to turn the corner and I can help you get out of it yourself. So that's what I offer is my experience. And I give you this invitation to connect with me, do a 30 minute assessment. We'll set that up through email. If you're interested in hearing more, we'll find out what you need as a service. If you need to connect with employees, how deep you wanna go with this offer. It can just be as simple as educational classes or we can bring it all the way into the one-on-one experience using hair mineral analysis to guide. So your options are endless. I know the owner, so I can be very flexible. That's me, if you didn't catch that. Anyways, (laughs) so um, yeah, and and I I definitely have questions for you. I'd love to know as a group, how many of you would love to see something like this as a process available as a feature um, to groups like CWI. So I'd love to hear your feedback. uh, If you just wanna email me, connect me from there, or if you have a question here for us today. So that's all I have as a presentation. You know what, I, I think it would be great um, for if, if any of our participants or those that are listening to this recording after the fact, if they are um, HR leaders in an organization or they are um, interested in, in health and wellness within their organizations, if they take advantage of this and have the one-on-one conversation with you and, and learn what you could do for their company. I think every company right now that is trying to manage a remote workforce and beginning to see the cracks, you know, uh, in the foundation should, should have a conversation with you about what you could do for their, for their workforce. 
And I welcome it. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. yeah. Excellent. Does anyone else have any additional questions? I don't see any popping up in the Q&A um, for Eva. I know this has been, uh, I would say this has been a refresher for me because, you know, full disclosure, I am a client of the Elevate Institute, um, but it, it does help you to remember the holistic approach, the, you know, not taking just a, you know, do this and do that and try this and try that. And, and my neighbor said this and my coworker said that, but instead, like, what is the whole, what's the whole thing? I, I loved what you said about, we're not trying to track down and kill a symptom, you know, we're, what caused it to begin with? Yeah, because the, the, the end result is going to be the same. It's going to be relief. It's going to be, it doesn't matter whether you give it a name or not. Mm -hmm. You know, if you, if you take a pill for your anxiety, fine, we'll start there. Let's get you off that pill as soon as possible. That's my goal. Yeah. yeah. Excellent. Well, Eva, I am so glad that you spent this time with us and, and did this beautiful presentation here. Um, I know that folks are going to want to be in touch with you later on. Um, and we do have, um, let's see, there is one question here. Where do we sign up for consultation? The best thing is to email you, Eva, mm -hmm. I would yeah. assume. Yeah. yeah. And let's just go back to that slide. Oops, sorry. That's okay. Back to. There we go. Yeah. So here's how you can get a hold of Eva um, and have a conversation with her. I guarantee you that you will not be, um, you won't be disappointed. <laughs> oh, thank you, Patty. <laughs> yeah, it, it, tru it truly is. You never know where something's going to come from. And I know as a, an experience of being a leader, being somebody who's in corporate for a long time, I spent 25 years in corporate America and I decided that it wasn't for me. Um, you know, when leaders in community are not feeling well, I'm just going to say it, shit rolls downhill. Mm -hmm. When they don't feel well, you're going to know about it. And when you don't feel well as somebody at the helm, how can your employees work well for you? Right, right. That's excellent, excellent. Well, again, thank you so much, Eva. And I encourage uh, everyone either watching us live or listening to the replay of this later, take advantage of having a conversation with Eva. Think about what it means for your workforce, how much better and more productive they can be if they, if they improve their own well-being and what a leadership quality would that demonstrate to show that to them and make that available to them. So I encourage everybody to take advantage of this, do what you can to make your, your workforce healthy and productive and, and better. And as for me, uh, I just want to thank you all for attending today. I thank you for joining us. I thank you for the questions that you've asked and keep in touch with, with us at Connected Women of Influence. There is always more to learn, more to do, um, more to improve ourselves as business leaders and business women. Thanks again, Eva. Thanks to all of you and we will see you soon. Stay healthy and well, everybody.